Hello, it's Wednesday, April 25th. Welcome to the best of Humber News. Coming from the Broadcast Center here at the North Campus, I'm Alex Fuller. And I'm Kelly Snyder. Thanks for joining us. Ahead on our show, we have all your news, sports, and entertainment highlights from throughout the year. But first, Alex has our top story. A party intended to thank the Ontario Liberals for cutting tuition by 30% turned sour when an unwelcome visitor stopped by. Kate McCullough was there as the drama unfolded. Student protesters accosted the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities, Glenn Murray, Thursday evening at a thank you party held by the University of Toronto Young Liberals. Once the woman was escorted out, Murray continued his speech on a different note. We do not, we do not need to treat CFS people the way they treat us. Murray was invited to speak at the event held by the Young Liberals to thank the McGuinty government for a promise kept. In January, the Ontario Liberal government offered a 30% tuition rebate to eligible students in the province. The event was held at the Bedford Academy, just up the street from U of T. It was a full house for the celebration. And it's a really great initiative. It's the biggest investment in direct aid to students in, I think, our generation, and it deserves to be celebrated. Murray says he understands the financial needs of students. He says his government could do more, but that this is a good start. Uh, I think that's something that is a great record. I don't think we have to apologize to anyone for it. Uh, but for those that disagree with us, you want to listen to them. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's about we're a party of respect, not of extremes. While some students thanked the Liberal government, others protested. The Canadian Federation of Students took to Queen's Park once again for its annual rally. Students say 30% is not enough and does not reach enough students. Well, the grant is, is fairly narrow in the scope of students that it actually touches. Mature students, part-time students, and those whose parents earn more than 160000 a year are not eligible for the rebate. And the reality of education is that, one, uh, you know, we're seeing more mature students entering uh, colleges and universities, and two, you know, students are actually carrying on more and more debt. Though many students came out to voice their concerns about the rising cost of post-secondary, many chose to sit this year out. More than 3,000 people were expected to protest in Queen's Park today, but turnout was lower than anticipated. By party or protest, the voices of students in Toronto were heard. Kate McCullough, Humber News. A major story on the local level was the polarizing debate in, over transit in Toronto. Mayor Rob Ford was in favor of a plan that would see new subways built while left-leaning councillors wanted more affordable light rail transit. Days before the final decision, our reporter Jennifer Alvarez caught up with a pro-subway group from Scarborough. Citizens and city councillors alike gathered at the Scarborough Civic Centre to support Mayor Rob Ford's plan to build more subways. Hundreds of supporters attended the meeting to hear panelists discuss the financial and social benefits of the expansion of the Shepherd Subway. Among the panelists were city councillors, operations specialists, and later on in the evening, Mayor Rob Ford to the surprise of many. The pro-subway meeting's agenda focused on issues such as city construction, traffic congestion, city finances, commuter travel times, and the environment. Panelist and former chair of the planning committee, Councillor Norm Kelly, says he supports subways and stressed to those at the meeting that light rail trains are not part of a rapid transit network. We have to maximize everything that we've got going for us. And that means we need rapid transit in the core of the GTA. That's why I support subways. Scarborough resident Patricia Sinclair says support for subways is not only a financial and infrastructural issue, but also an environmental one. We need rapid, reliable, frequent travel, uh, a transportation that will motivate people to get out of their vehicles and onto the system, which will be better for the environment. It will reduce the gridlock. Councillor Doug Ford also says the subway expansion is about the future of the city, its residents and long-lasting transit. This is a non-partisan issue. This is about building proper transit for the next 50 to 100 years. It's for building transit, believe it or not, for your kids and your children. This is a subway leaving, and it's clear that the subway versus LRT debate has divided Toronto into two opposing sides. No one knows what's going to happen this Wednesday, but it's clear that no matter what the decision is, subway supporters are not going to end the fight. For Humber News, this is Jennifer Alvarez. Well, the optimism at that meeting faded just a few days later when council met to determine the fate of the mayor's subway plan. The votes came in and the future of Toronto Transit was decided. At the end of a marathon two-day session, city council approved a light rail line on Shepherd Avenue East to Morningside Drive. 
putting an end to Mayor Rob Ford's subway dream. Councilors remain divided until the critical vote, with Councilor Giorgio Mammoliti supporting the mayor's underground transit plan. Using an LRT and uh, Scarborough doesn't want it. Uh, so uh, if Scarborough doesn't want it, uh, then why are we building an LRT? And Councillor Adam Bond arguing against it. And we'll end up serving fewer people with perhaps better service, but we won't be serving more people with more service. And, and, and my goal is to get more people into transit, and to do that you need more transit and more service, and the way to do that is through LRTs. Mayor Ford campaigned on a promise to build a subway into Scarborough, but Councillor Karen Stintz's pro-LRT side won the day. While the future Toronto Transit was up in the air, a renovation of the city's largest station was well underway. Justin Millerson has more on the construction. You may have noticed that Union Station is a little torn up. That's because the century-old transportation hub is going through its biggest revitalization period in its history. Not much has been publicly mentioned about the details of the project to date, but a government management committee revealed a thing or two of what will come to be. <laughs> Executive Director of Facilities Management, Chuck Donahue, presented the plans in front of City Council. The, the big reason was transit. Uh, the, the, the capacity uh, at the platform level and the capacity in the northeast corner has been exceeded now. So the in a presentation that lasted roughly 45 minutes, Donahue highlighted key aspects of the revitalization, which include the restoration and preservation of many of Union Station's heritage elements. Plans also include the creation of a new pedestrian pass system and retail contours below the station, expansion of the GO Transit and Veal Rail contours, and expansion of the number of station entrances. The City of Toronto is leading the revitalization with three major objectives, to improve the quality of the station, to restore her heritage elements, and to transform the Union Station into a major destination for dining, shopping, and visiting. Frequent Union Station user Al Joseph understands the completion date of 2016. I don't think the Pharaohs got really overly upset when they were building the pyramids for 10 years, so I think everybody should, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, you know, it's the way it's got to be built. Things got to be built. They just don't go together like that. Union Station's revitalization is a $640 million initiative supported by investments of $164 million from the Government of Canada, $172 million from the Government of Ontario, and $340 million from the City of Toronto. It's been a long way to see what will exactly happen at Union Station. As many have said, a revitalization should have happened a long time ago, but it appears the wait is now over. For Humber News, I'm Justin Millison. Old Man Winter may have missed Toronto this year, but few Canadians are complaining about the green grass and dry roads. Toronto's weather patterns were up and down for the first few months of the year. Instead of snow, the city saw rain and higher than average daytime temperatures. I love it. I love it. I'm not even going to lie. Honestly, I don't like the rain, the fact that it's rain, raining and that it's cold, but just the fact that it's warm. like I, it makes me, I'm wearing a sweater right now, right? And I'm comfortable, so I like it. I'm enjoying it. Hoodie weather is my favorite. <laughs> On this particular day in January, temperatures reached a high of 9 degrees, but that wasn't a record. On the same day two years ago, it was 11 degrees in Toronto. In an attempt to tighten the reign of the Internet, the American government introduced the Stop Online Piracy Act, known as SOPA. The controversial legislation was designed to crack down on illegal downloading. Popular file sharing site Mega Video was once one of the 10 most visited websites in the world. It has now been replaced by an official U.S. government notice. Mega Video is accused of conspiracy to commit racketeering, copyright infringement, and money laundering. Some worry this is a step towards internet censorship. I'm actually more worried about its sister project. The soap has been kicked out of uh, Congress as far as I know in the States. It would have been a lot worse for us up here in Canada because we tend to follow the trends of the United States, so if they had passed that, it would have been really bad for most Canadian sites, I think. Hacker Group Anonymous shut down the U.S. Department of Justice website for more than a week in retaliation. A similar worldwide outcry led to the shelving of SOPA. Coming up after the break, we have sports and entertainment highlights from throughout the semester. <laughs>